What's going on guys, my name is Elden Hero and welcome to another episode of my Leicester City career mode. I think we're at episode 63 but I can't be entirely sure but if it is so, um, if you guys want to get this video to 600 likes then episode 64 will be uploaded at around 7 or half 7 today. Um, I'm not sure exactly what time, I'll have to have a look at what time the football is on and things of that nature but uh, yeah 600 likes in that amount of time should be easily doable. It seems to happen every single weekend so uh, hopefully it'll happen again this weekend but as you see we're starting this episode off with a game against West Ham United we're playing at the King Power Stadium and I think we have a kind of a shady record against West Ham they kind of tend to come up with late equalizers against us an awful lot but uh, Vialba managing to give us the lead after just 10 minutes and I thought he'd initially ruined the chance for himself but he did really well to recover and get into a shooting position and give us the lead in the way that he did but um like he's just an incredible player it's been it's been well documented by me over the last few episodes not gonna lie but uh yeah he's just amazing it's, it's great to have a player who's capable of shooting from anywhere and can dribble around players easily and things like that because um the one thing that this series has lacked for an awful long time is players who are of a high enough rating to do that like we don't really have any 80 rated players uh dwight gale i think should be rated 80 because of the way that he plays from time to time but uh sadly he's still rated at 73 as he's been uh, afflicted by the potential glitch which definitely exists this, by the way I've definitely decided that it does because there's no way that Dwight Gale uh, should have only gone up one rating in four seasons like that quite frankly that's a load of bollocks but uh, we come into the second half of this game with uh, Andy Carroll crossing the ball in towards Kevin Nolan who's in a decent enough position in the box to find Ravel Morrison whose shot is saved by Casper Schmeichel and put out from a corner kick or for a corner kick nothing came from the corner naturally and West Ham came forward in the final 10 minutes of the game they were pressing everything forward and it was really difficult for us to even break out a defense at certain points uh, and get anything going forward counter attacking was completely out of the question at this point but uh, Chambers plays the ball into Maiga in the 86th minute and he gets brought down inside the box allegedly by I think it was Bar I think it was Robertson actually at left back there but um I did say early in, in the episode that West Ham have a terrible tendency of scoring late equalizers against us. I don't know if I made that up or not, but they have the perfect opportunity to do so here as they get a spot kick. I, I think maybe, I don't know, that replay is very inconclusive due to the fact that I can't see True Origi. But uh, Kevin Nolan steps up from the spot, the dead ball specialist, and his penalty smashes the upright and eventually gets cleared away as Kasper Schmeichel holds on to it, waits for the opportunity to release it. And we hold on to get a 1-0 victory out of West Ham, which I think is a really good result. Um, despite the fact that it, it, it's kind of an expected result, it should be a routine victory. But uh, I think it's a good one. And we go into our next game. This is against Mordovia Saransk in the Europa League. And uh, we only have three points from three games, which is not very good considering the two teams who've beaten us are both ahead of us uh, significantly so. And they're both playing each other. And it's just not looking good for our chances. We realistically need Feyenoord to lose in their game if we're to stand any chance of qualification. But uh, Mordovia's team is an interesting one. I mentioned before I've got Damien Letalic up front and I just find that strange. I'd never even heard of Mordovia Saransk before um, and I looked them up and they're a team who plays in the Russian league but they're actually from their own country which is kind of technically owned by Russia and it's all complicated stuff but basically I didn't know that Mordovia was a place and now I do and uh, I feel like a better person because of it but in the 17th minute of this game the ball comes to Vlasov on the edge of the area and his shot goes just wide of uh, Jack Butlin's post. Is it? Yeah it is Jack Butlin in goal and then we come up to just 10 minutes later with Vialba on the ball as he charges through the defence and gets into a really good position to score but sees his shot saved and I started Vialba in this game uh, even though I shouldn't have because of fitness reasons but he's got incredible stamina I think he's like 90 something stamina and we needed a win in this game regardless of what happened but we did actually like completely walk over the Saransk team when we went there uh, we got a 4-3 victory I suppose they did hit us with 3 goals but uh, we come up to the 50th minute of this game with Mike Analete on the ball he does quite well to get around Zasiv in the uh, Mordovia defence and then he plays it into Origi who gets into a great position and manages to score thanks to a deflection off the defender. It wasn't the prettiest of goals. It was his first ever goal for the club in what's been uh, an honestly fairly unspectacular start to his season. He's not really done anything that's impressed me so much. But uh, in the 65th minute, Vlasov plays the ball into Damien Letalic who goes very close to equalising for the visitors before the chance is cleared by a combination of Schlup and Baragi. And we go into a counter-attack from there with uh, Origi finding Mike and Leite, who chips it over to the on-rushing Hector, Hector Vialba who's in a great position from here and he does exactly what you would expect him to do from that position and that is make it 2-0 to us in the 68th minute from a perfectly executed counter attack and I read a comment in yesterday's video saying um, the, the words that you say the most are and we go on a counter attack or something like that and it's so true like but it's the way that Leicester play in real life 
Um, and I think that's that's like kind of a cool thing about me being Leicester is that the the strongest I've ever played on FIFA is always on the counter attack. I've just always been that type of player. But uh, we come up to the final ten minutes of this game with Jeffrey Schlupp doing really well to get around the left back and cross the ball in towards Gale, uh, who heads it down to Leite. And I think that's a really nice goal to round off the proceedings at this fixture with just nine minutes left in the game. Just a really nice combination of kind of. Um, I don't know, a very good attack and trio that we've had throughout the series overall. Schlupp from the first season, Gale from the second season, and Michael Leite from last season. Uh, and that's how the game ends, a 3-0 victory for us, which is exactly what we needed to get back on our feet in the Europa League. And uh, we exit that to take a look at the group table. And we are now in second place with two games to go against uh, Feyenoord away from home uh, in Rotterdam. They're from Rotterdam, aren't they? Please tell me that they are. And then we have Besiktas at home. So if we win both of those games, we're guaranteed to go through to the next round of the Europa League, uh, probably in second place, which will mean that we'll take on one of the teams who's dropped out of the Champions League uh, and finish third place in their group so it'll probably be a, a more difficult clash for us but to be honest if if that's what it takes to get a higher league position I really don't care because the Europa League can just go and fuck itself I just don't care about that tournament at all it's so hard to get motivated for it because this game is on Saturday against QPR at Loftus Road and our game at the King Power Stadium against Mordovia Saransk was on the Thursday so playing on a Thursday and then a Saturday is just nonsense to be honest but um, we went with a fairly strong team for this game as well with uh, Gale and Vialba playing up front just because uh, QPR QPR are a difficult team to play against as well like we've kind of been um, fairly solid against them in all their recent meetings but I remember in the first season I just couldn't beat them at all for anything uh, and we come up to the 10th minute of this game where Armand Traore getting the ball on the right hand side of the pitch his cross finds Diakite and it's headed down towards Jordan Much who sees his shot saved by Schmeichel um, Much is actually a fairly decent player I think I'm not sure what his rating is in this game but I might look into might look into it see if, if it's anywhere near the 80s I might sign him because Gary Gardner is probably going to leave he hasn't actually clarified uh, if he wants another contract or not yet but it looks as though he is going to leave the club and uh, speaking of Gary Gardner he actually came very close to giving us the lead there in the 25th minute but unfortunately he did not do so and we come up to the half hour mark with Vialba picking the ball up as he tries to outrun Jordan Much and the uh, QPR defence he gets into the box manages to get his shot off and the goalkeeper almost spilled it into the back of his own net but uh, he didn't do so sadly enough for us then we come up to the 45th minute of the game with Leroy Fair getting an excellent opportunity to give the hosts the lead but um, he didn't manage to complete the like that's an easy finish I think Vialba would have scored that on the turn easily and the AI tends to do that but we come up to the 54th minute of the game with Scott Sinclair's cross finding Anderson in the box who heads it into his own net and we got 1-0 up in the game despite not even having had a shot on target at this current point which I found like bizarre then we come up to the 65th minute of the game with Gardner on the ball he plays a great ball into Mike Canaleta who has the pace to uh, to do some real damage from this type of position he Ronaldo chops inside passes the ball to Vialba and Vialba makes it 2-0 because doesn't he just score in every single game that he plays he's an absolutely incredible player and we come to the final 10 minutes of the game with uh, Mike Canaleta getting into a great position uh, to make it 3-0 but amazingly he manages to miss the target from there which I just find so bizarre then in the 85th minute we got a kind of a counter attack going um, there was enough time to have taken the sting out of the game at this point though it's probably not a proper counter attack but Vialba gets in after an amazing pass and he gets in ahead of Anua and manages to make it 3-0 with his second goal of the game and uh, he just can't be stopped at the moment he scores so many goals uh, it's ridiculous and he just has the pace to dribble and the finishing ability and it's so good to have a player like that as he gets his 11th league goal I think it's his 12th in the season overall and uh, he's just he's just so good. We ended that game with 44% possession and only 71% pass accuracy. But we did take three goals and three points from our opposition, which is absolutely awesome. Then uh, we come out of that game. Here's a look at the squad report if you guys want to see it. Um, there's not really anything to report. But I think January is going to be quite interesting for us because we're going to have to offload... Uh, the likes of Boyata and Gamboa. Hopefully, if we could get rid of both of them and get some money, I don't know what it would be. We'd probably get two and a half million, maybe, uh, in total if we're lucky. And I don't even know how much uh, money I actually have left over apart from that. But um, it's going to be really difficult, I think, to strengthen the team in January without looking to do some sort of de uh, swap deals with certain teams because... Um, 
I, I don't even know what areas of the team need to be improved at the moment. I'd like to get another winger in who could play on the right-hand side. Um, and also, I think I'm going to have to loan out Valer Brasson as well, um, the Scout of Future Star guy, because he's played an awful lot of games. I know he's rated 71. Uh, he shouldn't go up too much because he's only 16, but you'd expect to see the odd plus one on his stats here and there. Uh, and it's not there, and that's a little bit alarming for us. But uh, what are you going to do? That's how the game is. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous at times. But uh, it would be good to loan him out anyways because there's always a chance that he'll grow a little bit if he's out on loan and he might get played a little bit more than he does already at the club so uh, we'll see how that works out but um, as I said earlier in the video if this gets to 600 likes there'll be another episode later on this evening so look out for that if does if this does reach the target that's the end of the video I've been Elden Hero thanks for watching